Today we're going to look at some of the power supplies from 1981. Power supplies seem to have shot up in price recently, certainly the linear type with a transformer in them, to be replaced by switch mode power supplies, which I don't believe in the long term are reliable. And my experience has been that switch mode power supplies generate RF noise, which is the last thing we want on the radio receiver. So I think it's time to take some of these faulty power supplies off the shelf and do some service work on them because they're now worth servicing. Now these were banned round about 1982 as being unsafe. They sold in various brands, all made in Taiwan. As you can see we've got an Altai one in front of us and yet this has came, come with a lid that says this one has been tested to be safe. Well not as far as I'm concerned. Now my colleague Mr C is going to point some features out about this. We've taken it apart so we could order parts. We're going to be changing the electrolytic capacitors just as a matter of course because of the sheer age. Now Mr C if you kind of turn that around somewhat, I'll probably do, and then twist it towards the camera so I'm, you're now, we're now looking more at the innards. Can you point out with a screwdriver how the live lead goes straight to the on and off switch, the brown wire from the mains lead goes straight to the on and off switch, it doesn't go via the fuse, we want it to go via the fuse. So we, we want it to go to the fuse first, then to the on and off switch. You always switch to live. It is only a single pole switch. Ideally it would be a double pole switch, but it isn't. And the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting shrouding on the live terminals so that if you do open it up, you're not likely to get a shock. Now, if you just withdraw the fuse holder, Mr. C, and this is the other snag. The fuse stays behind. It's not captive with the holder. That means that that fuse would now be alive if that was plugged in. So that's another safety problem. Now if I throw across one of those fuses to you, you'll be able to show the camera. <laughs> and I hope I've ordered the right ones and they are captive fuses. So you pop the fuse in there. And when you take that one out, it comes out with the holder. It doesn't leave the holder behind. So we're going to be changing those electrolytics and we're going to be changing that fuse holder. And then we'll come back to you hopefully with a finished product in a moment. Right, okay, now we're back to the finished article Mr C has been working on. Now if you'd just like to take the fuse holder out and show the viewers if you can do it. This is now captive. There we go. So you haven't got the danger of touching the live fuse. It's been rewired so the live goes straight to the fuse, then to the switch and then to the transformer. And if you tilt the power supply this way we can just see, I'll just zoom in on that. We've actually now got shrouding on the mains transformer and on the switches so they're insulated from prying fingers hopefully. Now the capacitors, the big capacitor is 2200 microfarads at um, 25 volts if you want to poke your finger in that direction. Then the two smaller ones are 100 microfarads each at 25 volts, they've been replaced. We didn't need to change the diodes, they're not faulty, but the 1N5400 which are 3 amp rated uh, rectifier diodes. Transformer is um, 26 volts secondary for your information. Twist, Just twist it so we can see the big transistor on the heat sink. Um, other way around, that, that one, yeah, that's it. We, If we had to replace that we'd be putting a 2N3055 in which is an NPN power transistor. That's well obsolete and I can't even remember the number but if you look it up they've not been around for about 30 years. Then on the board, I don't think we can see that, but on the board is a Another transistor. I'll just move the camera. Don't know if we can see that. Yes, we can. Yes, there we go. The one which is what's called two TA two two twenty case, which looks like the output transistor of a CB set, is a two SD two three five. I seem to recall. 
again they're well obsolete but I have ordered some from China so I haven't had to look at what they are. And the two small transistors, the two little plastic small transistors are um, 2SC oh, 20, uh, 2315 is it? Hmm, I'm going to have to get the crib sheet. Yeah, it's just looking at it, it's 2815. Is that what you just said? 2SC 2815. 18. 1815. It's 1 in that uh, 1. Now the 5 amp version of these, you'll see this, the, you'll find there's two of those um, big 2200 uh, microphone capacitors, four rectifier diodes, and two of the 2SC1815 transistors. So what we're now going to do, and we have tried it already, it's not like uh, we haven't done, is we'll just plug it in and show you. So if you'd like to power that up with the meter uh, on, without the load, and we'll see what that is off load. Right, 13.67 on that meter, which incidentally was £2.89 off uh, um, AliExpress from China, <laughs> delivered. Um, and if I like to put the load, what we've done is to solder some banana plugs and a bit of wire onto the car light bulb. If you want to just dangle that in front, Mr C. So I've got a 21 watt car bulb there, and I've put uh, some banana clips on it. So it's, it's nearly 2 amps if you work that out, 21 watts at uh, 12 volts so it's just going to connect that up and then before it burns the camera out I'll get it to put it in a in a packet when it lights up so hopefully when you switch that on there you are you can see our car light bulb has lit up and we've got um, now I've got the fluorescent light on that angle. Uh, there we go. And on 2 amp load it's dropping to what? 12.98, 12.99, 13. That's fine. So there is another power supply rescued. So it's the just simply the three capacitors in this case and some rewiring and an improved fuse holder. So there you are, that brings the old 1981 Taiwanese power supplies that got banned up to a safe standard and with those new capacitors to be good for another 2,000 hours use. Thank you for watching.